In this class, learn what it takes to be a competitive physique athlete and what all is involved in that. Each student will complete this class with a clear vision of which category they best fit into to compete on stage. Men have three categories to choose from. There's men's physique with the board shorts, there's classic physique, and men's bodybuilding. For the ladies, we have bikini, fitness, figure, women's physique, and bodybuilding. This course is geared more for the first time competitor or someone who is interested in stepping on stage, but even the seasoned competitor can still take something away from this course. We are Crystal and JR from Team Muscle Time. And what we do is we prep competitors for competition. That includes diet, training, posing, spray tanning. Uh, Crystal makes custom suits for competitors, and that's what we do. <laughs> First thing to think about when you are interested in competing is your why. This is the constant topic that you're gonna come back to every time you have a rough day or you start questioning if you're gonna be ready for a show. Some examples of our clients' whys are... They want to bring their fitness to the next level. They've been in the gym working out for some time and want a new challenge. They want to build more confidence and self-esteem. To test their willpower and mental grit to see what they're capable of. Or maybe you just want to look good naked. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> Why did I start competing? Well, um, after probably 10 years in the gym or more, I decided uh, let's get on stage. Let's see what my body's capable of. Why did you start competing, Crystal? I like muscle. <laughs> I always wanted a lot of muscle, but so I trained like I was going to step on stage, but never really knew what to do till I met this guy and he walked me through the process. That's right. But why do you keep competing? I keep competing to push myself, to have a goal to strive for. Um, I like that challenge, always trying to come in better, better version of myself. I'm realistic. I know my genetic capabilities and limitations, so I just want to see what I can do with my body, I guess. I think that's the same for me. I like to keep pushing myself and get better and better every time. I am a bikini competitor. I earned my natural pro card and now I currently compete at the national level in the NPC. And do you have any overall wins, honey? I have a shit ton of overall wins. Okay, don't be honest. <laughs> and I am an NPC bodybuilder, uh, nationally qualified, some overall wins, class wins. Yeah. So now we're going to break down the different categories of bodybuilding competition for you so that you know exactly which one you fit into best. They have a lot of classes to try to fit everybody's body type for the most part. So most likely there's a class for you. So each level displays a different level of muscularity and leanness. So knowing which category your personality and physique fit into will ultimately ensure your comfortability and success in the sport. So let's break down each category. Let's start with bodybuilding. Bodybuilding. The biggest, baddest ones out there. Um, for the most part. <laughs> Some people like me might not be the big freaks. Oh, but... I'll give you a run for your money. Yeah, she might. But... <laughs> anyway, so in bodybuilding, what are they looking for? That should be the most muscularity, the most conditioning, being as lean as possible, and a freak factor for the most part. Symmetry. Symmetry's good. Top to bottom, side to side. Yeah, symmetry means like kind of having a pleasing physique where everything is comparable to one another. So you can't have a huge upper body and no legs, or you can't have, you know, you shouldn't have really small arms with a really big chest. No one's perfect, obviously, but you want to try to look balanced on stage and, and in proportion. 
A perfect example of bodybuilding is the current Mr. Olympia champ, Sean Roden. See his X-frame, how his upper and lower body complement each other? Notice his muscle mass, full muscle bellies, wide shoulders, shapely arms, wide lats that taper into a small chiseled waist, and flaring thighs with shapes and separation in the muscle. Yeah, so that brings us to conditioning. Conditioning is the level of leanness that you are, and bodybuilding is at the highest level of conditioning that they require. So you really want to see the separations in each muscle and even striations in that muscle, so the cross striations in your muscles and your quads, for example. And that's true low body fat percentage, very thin skin. And that goes for both men and women. So the next category is classic physique. This is for men. And this category was created somewhat recently um, to try to bring back the classic look of bodybuilding. They were getting sick of bellies being too big and open bodybuilding and people losing their symmetry and not being pleasing to the eye. So they wanted to go back to more of what bodybuilding looked like from like the 70s and the 80s. This is IFBB Classic Physique Pro Chris Bumstead. He has one of the, my favorite physiques for this class. So if you look at this picture, probably the first thing that you notice is his midsection. And see how it's sucked in like that? That's called a vacuum pose. And this is something that a lot of people in the class do. This is a pose that a lot of the classic bodybuilders from back in the day used to do. Um, so it's not mandatory, but it's definitely a nice little addition for your posing to have that vacuum. In the class description is a link to the height and weight classifications. So conditioning in this category is pretty much the same as bodybuilding. Um, you still want to be lean, you still want to be ripped, you still want to be hard, you still want to be vascular. Small waist, small waist. So the basic difference between bodybuilding and classic physique is mass monsters versus more of the Arnold Schwarzenegger, I guess, of the day. Yeah. And posing is definitely huge in this category. Your presentation is huge. That's part of the, the class. So if you look back on bodybuilders, like I said, from the 70s and 80s and 90s, watch how they pose and watch how pretty their posing is. Yeah. So the posing in classic physique is displayed with a little bit more poise and fluidity and style. So the next category for women is women's physique. Uh, this category was pretty much um, invented to have a modern day approach to women's bodybuilding and the only category that women are not in heels, mm. barefoot. They get to flex like badasses. Yeah, <laughs> but pretty. IFBB Pro, Juliana Malacarni is a great example of the women's physique category. These ladies have a high level of muscle, a little less than women's bodybuilding, while keeping a feminine overall look. Notice her conditioning, detailed separation in the muscle with just a touch of striation. That brings us to our next category for women, figure. And figure is another level of muscularity for women. A little less than women's physique. Their conditioning is a little bit less than women's physique as well. So you still have the separation in the muscle, but you don't necessarily have the striations in the muscle. This is IFBB Figure Pro Candace Lewis Carter. And she represents the figure category very well. Notice the itty bitty waist, the wide shoulders, the nice V taper into her waist, um, the sweep on her legs, meaning the size of her legs and how they kind of protrude out on the sides, X frame that definitely stands out, and just an amazing, amazing physique. Their posing is completely different than all the other categories. It is more structured. There's four poses, front, each side, and then the rear. We're talking quarter turns without flexing per se. So no arms in the air flexing, nothing like a bodybuilder or a classic physique or women's physique competitor would do. And yet another category for females is fitness. There's two parts of fitness. One is the physique category. So your physique is judged just like figure. And the physiques they're looking for in this category is basically a figure physique, but you have a gymnastic type approach to it, which goes towards your um, performance category, which, are, which you are judged on, which is actually 
the largest um, part of your judging process is your routine. So it's kind of like a gymnastics dance routine to show your strengths and your flexibility and all of your muscularity through these routines. They're pretty crazy. Yeah, and a lot of girls that do fitness have a gymnastics background. Not all of them, but most of them do. So it's definitely something they can take gymnastics to another level if maybe if they get done with their gymnastics and still want to be competitive, then fitness is definitely a good category for them. And I give fitness competitors the most respect because they are lean, they are dry, they are in shape, and they're out there doing things that... Flips and tricks and one-handed push-ups. <laughs> and that's being dehydrated and shredded and lean and things that your body has no energy to do and doesn't want to do. And they're out there doing it and making it look amazing and awesome and they're beautiful and much respect. Incredible. For sure. All right, the last category for men is men's physique. Men with board shorts, the beach look. So think fitness model, like cover of a magazine. This is IFBB Men's Physique Pro, Andre Ferguson. Now this class is mostly judged from the waist up. Notice his small waist, ripped abs, full chest, broad shoulders and lats, his developed arms, and his V-taper. Now the posing in this category is a little bit different than all of the other ones for men. It's more pretty. So again, think fitness model. This category is definitely very good for beginners. Uh, it's much more obtainable, as they say, because it's not, you don't have to push your body to the extreme, and you might not need the years under the iron building tons of muscle to compete in this category. So definitely a great category to start and to get your feet wet in the competitive world. And the last category for females, and this is one of the most popular categories, and this happens to be Crystal's favorite category. Bikini! This category is the easiest for females because we don't have to have a ton of muscle. This is IFBB Bikini Pro Jennifer Ronziti. In the bikini division, they're looking for overall balance of muscle with shapely shoulders, a small waist, and full round glutes. We do still have to be lean, but not super lean that we see all sorts of separations. So posing for bikini, it's pretty. We can say somewhat flirty, sassy, um, and hopefully tasteful. Definitely tasteful. Classy and sassy. <laughs> A whole lot of assy. Yeah. <laughs> project time. This is a two-part project. Part one, write out your why for competing. Why do you want to compete? And post it in a place that you can see it and be reminded each and every day. And part two, post a current picture of you in the gym, uh, maybe hitting a pose, showing the class that you best fit into now, and maybe say what, what class you'd like to compete in in the future. And say why you want to compete in that class. Is it the, more for the look? or more for the personality. Now one thing to think about is where do you fit into now and where do you want to fit into? Because if you, for example, if you're a female and you may look like a bikini competitor but you want the muscle of a figure chick, go for a figure, man. Take the time and build the muscle and work your way up. Same instance for a man. If you want to start in men's physique and you want to, you know, go to maybe bodybuilding or classic physique, all in stride, got to start somewhere. Some of the upcoming topics we will be teaching are the time and cost associated with competing, choosing the right prep coach for you, the importance of proper diet and training, and how to choose a show. And lots more. Lots, lots more. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>